Hi, thanks for watching. My new video today, I'm going to paint a portrait of Joe Exotic. He's a personal hero of mine, because I love guns and blowing stuff up, and I'm heavily addicted to crystal meth. So let's check it out. There's my reference picture. Here's a stencil that I traced off of it. Here's a little bigger. All right, here we go. Starting off with uh, blues, mostly blues. Did this thing with the color for this one where uh, I did a lot of blue undertones and painted over them with flesh color. Uh, but I watered the flesh color down a lot so that that blue would show through a little bit more because Joe Exotic's a little bit of an older gentleman. And uh, I don't know, I could see some kind of blue undertones to his skin when I was looking at the picture. It might have just been the lighting also, the fluorescent lighting. But yeah, just getting in there with some blue undertones. Just kind of laying in the dark areas. The, the darkest areas in this picture, if you look at the reference picture, it's like the pupils of his eyes, uh, his nostrils, and his open mouth. And some bits of his hair here and there, mostly like his roots. And uh, that kind of bit on the side behind the ear. But the darkest parts are like pupils, nostrils, open mouth. A little bit of a shadow under the lip too. There's usually a, a dark, dark shadow under people's bottom lips. And it kind of rounds out the chin a little bit. But I, I changed the expression a little bit, and I tried to make this a little more dignified. You know, I didn't want to, didn't want to beat the man down in his darkest hour. So I wanted to, wanted to take that mugshot, make it a little more dignified, add a cool background to it. A little bit of orange there. Made it pop. Then I had this idea to make him sort of like a like a shirtless man tiger. He's got tiger stripes on his shoulders. Very dignified. But yeah, the, the orange background, it'll play cool off of the, the blue undertones there. Orange and blue, uh, they complement each other well. And of course his very, very white, blondish hair. I did that mostly with uh, like brown undertones, blue where it was like really dark, kind of at the top of his head there. You can see these roots. Uh, yeah, brown undertones, blue where it's darkest. And then I mixed up a, sort of a really pale yellow color with uh, just a little bit of like you know, a uh, pretty bright kind of canary yellow with a little bit of brown to it, a little bit of burnt sienna to it, and a lot of white mixed in too. Probably a little bit more white than yellow for sure, just to kind of make it real, real pale, you know? And I watered that down a lot and blended it with the undertones to create the kind of uh, Hulk Hogan hair color. It's kind of yellowish, white, blonde, kind of not naturally found in nature. And you can see the, the cheekbones there, kind of blocking those in. I wanted that one side of his face. Uh, if you're looking at the left side, it's a little crazier than the right side. His eyes bugging out a little more. Because he's a wild man tiger. You don't know what he's capable of. The goatee was really fun. Um, mostly got that just by doing it layer by layer <clears throat> you get a little bit of detail in with each layer and then there's some detail that you might not like and you just kind of paint over that with the next layer but preserve the parts of it that you do like and sooner or later you'll end up with something that you know looks like what you're going for <clears throat> And 
And if you're doing something like this and you go a little too dark with something, that's not a big deal because you're going to paint over it anyway with another layer. So you can kind of even it out with that next layer, make the color that you paint over it with a little brighter and blend into it. And it'll kind of, uh, you know, it'll even it out. It'll look better too. It always looks better when you build your colors up layer by layer. That's why I usually use a pretty limited palette. Like my palette this time was, uh, you know, the usual two browns, two blues. I had a purple in there. A couple reds that I really didn't use except to mix flesh tones. And to mix those flesh tones, you, uh, you just combine a little bit of that light brown with the white, about equal parts, more or less, and a little, little bit of red like a cadmium red or a brighter, you know, kind of red. Uh, and that red will kind of give it, uh, you know, more of like a pinky, sort of a fleshy hue. But for, for Joe Exotic's flesh tones here, I actually mix a little bit of the orange that I made for the background with the, the brown and white combination. Just to kind of, uh, I don't know, make it a little more opaque so that it would blend with those blue undertones a little better. I think the result was pretty cool. I didn't want him to look like sickly, you know, but it's like uh, bright fluorescent lighting where they took this picture. And, um, you know, you just kind of want to accentuate certain, certain colors that you see with the reference photo that you get. And you can see me blending some browns in with that hair. And the ears. I blended uh, the darker parts of the face out with the blues, like in the set of the eyes and, um, you know, cheekbones. And then um, the lighter details I did with the lighter brown. And that way when I blended the flesh tone in with it, uh, it was a little less harsh with the, the lighter brown. And then the blue comes through a little more and blends out a darker color. It's always a little darker around the eyes because they're a little more sunken in. A little more shadow in there. With the brow coming down. Putting in a little more detail with the hair. With a light brown. Light brown's a really good color to do kind of the preliminary sort of sketching and shading with because if you don't like the way it turns out it's a light enough color to just go over it with something else and it won't really uh, obstruct the end product too much and you can still work with it. Yellow okra is another good color to use like that. Sort of a yellowish brown. A little bit brighter than a burnt sienna. Built that mustache mostly up with uh, a little bit of blues for the, the darker parts and a couple different browns. I used the kind of pale orange flesh tone a little bit here and there to kind of even it out. Didn't really go into it with any white or anything like that. Just kind of built it up bit by bit with the different darker tones. And like I was saying before, you kind of preserve the parts that come out that you like, and you can paint over the parts that you don't like. If it's a little darker, just paint over it with a brighter color. It'll even out. That hair was kind of tricky. I wasn't really sure how to approach it. But when I was looking at the reference photo, I noticed in the forehead area, there's a lot of parts where the hair is kind of uh, parted and his forehead's showing through. So I blocked that in, and then I blocked the tips of his hair in using negative space by going into it with the flesh tone. And then it kind of started taking shape after that. It was pretty easy to get it going once you kind of get the basic shape of it down. If you're ever stuck, 
you know, just try to focus on one little thing and you'll, you'll get the idea for the next thing as you work on it and keep looking at it. Total time for this painting, it was, uh, you know, less than 10 hours, maybe around like eight hours or so, but actual painting time of brush to paper, probably be about half of that. I spent a lot of time just kind of staring at it and thinking about what the next step should be. Here we are so far, day two, probably about six hours into it. Started on the hair yesterday. Gonna finish that out, finish the face off. There's a couple things I need to do. I need to kind of tweak this cheekbone shadow a little bit. Finish the forehead up. Getting close. And here we are starting day two. Going to put some more detail in this hair with some light browns. Putting a little more detail into the goatee also with some dark browns. And the trick is to not paint out every individual little hair, but to try to build up layers of hair over time. Or not necessarily layers, but the illusion of layers. You just kind of have uh, little details showing through in certain spots and kind of blend into other spots. Kind of a hard thing to describe how to do. But you can see it coming together bit by bit when you build it up by layers. But it's important to have a good reference picture. This reference picture was nice. It was good, high quality wasn't pixelated at all, nice and clear, good lighting, can make out all the features real good, and then decide, you know, if you want to exaggerate this about it, or make it a little darker, or bring out certain highlights a little more. But if it's a bad, like, fuzzy picture with low resolution, it's, it's not going to be uh, easy to work with. And with the the kind of mullet part of his hair, you want to show that he has locks. So you just kind of build, uh, build up the, the shapes of the flow of his hair. It's kind of easier to, to trace over it with tracing paper because... Some of the details get a little blurred, and you have to sort of sketch out the gist of it. Just sort of the parts that stand out. Certain curls here or waves. Just get the flow of it down, and then you can accentuate folds and layers as you paint with different colors. Built up the shadows and the curls of the mullet part with uh, darker browns and blues mostly. It's a little darker just behind his neck to kind of bring that that neck out a little more. The the dark color behind it creates that illusion of depth. And you can see me working the hair here. I'm starting to blend some of that yellow that I was talking about earlier in. And the color's coming out pretty nice. In spots that I made it too dark, 
I can just build it up a little uh, a little more over that. Or you can even go over it with white and then start over. Kind of use the white as a primer for the part that you want to correct. It's almost just as good as an eraser. But the idea was to build up the darker parts of the hair with the blues and the browns and blend that out. Use the white of the paper as the highlights and the yellow color is sort of uh, in between to bridge the gap between the shading and the highlights. been trying to work on hair a little more. I mentioned a few videos ago that that was one of the things that I was trying to build my skill up in. I'm pretty satisfied with how this hair came out. This is one of these paintings that I might work on a little more later. I think I got to a certain point with it where I'm finished on it for now, but maybe in a month or two I'll look at it and maybe round out some corners a little, kind of dot some I's, cross some T's. But you don't want to let it bog you down. Oop, had a little bit of purple behind it there, and it's pretty much done at this point. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe. New content's coming weekly.